If you are already familiar with the zero knowledge proof, then I strongly recommend you to uh, listen here this session, the designing public goods using ZKPs, uh, which is uh, running by the Rachel, uh, who is a uh, super designer of the Ethereum Foundation's PSE team. Uh, she have designed a lot. Uh, she has designed. Uh, in three years at the team and designed a lot of some uh, ZKP related user experiences and user interfaces so it might be very very inspiring uh, yeah so let's start with uh, about thinking about uh, where the ZKP is mostly used so we use zero knowledge proof uh, when you want to prove a fact but you don't want to share the information. I want to give you an example about uh, more detail. So uh, let's think about some example at immigration at the airport. Let's assume that uh, I'm an immigration officer here and just an entrant here. When, when, when you go to the airport, the immigration officer says, where are you from? Then uh, I say, like, uh, I'm from Korea. I'm from Korea. Then uh, immigration officer says, like, north or south? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely say I'm from south. But unfortunately, uh, this immigration officer doesn't trust me that much. So he says, like, um, I really think you look like from north. So give me your passport. This poor Korean guy wants to keep the freedom to keep my personal information. So I say like, oh, there's my personal information. I don't want to keep my passport. Then, okay, what happens? They just kick him out, kick him out. In this situation, uh, what should I have to do here? What should I do? What can I do here? Yeah, actually we can, I can show some passport number. I, I, I can show my nationality or passport card um, the cover. But if we give a zero knowledge proof that I can prove that I'm a part of the South Korean. Yeah, this is just an example which can be really happened in the future. Let's think about what happens here. So. We can call the immigration officer here as the verifier. The entrant, the poor South Korean, as the prover. And then the prover prepares the witness using my passport, which, it, which means like witness means I have some passport number here and I have some my, um, I'm a male and my, my number in Korea, something like that, and birthday, and et cetera. So, and then generates a ZK proof and give it to the uh, verifier, which means the immigration officer here. Then the verifier, the officer says, okay, I'm gonna verify this proof using the existing database we have. Actually, this is pretty possible. And we're going to take a look at the details uh, later about the how, uh, can, how we can prove the membership of that I'm a part of this South Korean people. Let's see what is witness and what is information we have to share here. So there are some informations you can see here. And maybe there is a passport number that I, want to, uh, that I don't want to share with the immigration officer, actually. Uh, totally doesn't make sense, but so I, we call these values uh, as private inputs. But I'm gonna just uh, say I'm a part of the uh, South Korean, so I just open my nationality. This is the public input, uh, and uh, to prove that I'm a part of the people, I just calculate some mathematical values using the inputs there. So uh, we call these intermediate values, including all the private inputs and the public inputs as witness here.
And this is just a basic model of how zero knowledge proving system works. So we have private inputs and we have public inputs. And also we have the circuit here. The circuit is uh, about the relations. Uh, what was the relations here in the immigration situation? It's like, I don't uh, reveal my passport number, but my passport number is definitely a part of the registered existing database of the Korean people's passport number. So it's kind of a membership proof. Oh, there's a database, and I don't want to share my information, but this is definitely exists in the database. So this relation is the what is is the circuit here, and using all the private inputs and public inputs and circuits, the prover uh, makes a zero knowledge proof, and then the verifier verifies this zero knowledge proof using the circuit, using the same circuit, using the given circuit, uh, to verify that I am a part of the uh, Korean people. Okay, then. Uh, let's think about how and why it works. Uh, yeah, to start with it, I think I should explain about what is ZK Snark. Actually, maybe I think some of uh, people here in this room might be pretty familiar with, with what is ZK Snark, and some of uh, some of us are not familiar with this. So, I'm gonna explain pretty in detail, so sometimes it's not for five years old kid, I think. So um, please understand. Uh, I'm gonna start with the classic example. Maybe many of you heard about, when you just uh, search Google, what is ZKP, then you might see some example of Alibaba there. Then here's an example that here's a very extremely smart rhino. And he's arguing that he knows the magic phrase of the Alibaba cave. Can you trust him? Can you believe it? It's pretty hard to believe, isn't it? So we are, ver we are the verifier. And uh, by the way, uh, this argument that this rhino is doing is called the argument of knowledge because this rhino is arguing that he knows the magic phrase. This is called the argument of knowledge. Uh, by the way, because this is pretty um, hard to believe, uh, the verifier comes up with an idea and says to the rhino that, okay, go to the cave and uh, wait for me there. Then uh, rhino goes to the cave so you can see how the Alibaba cave looks like here. So there is a uh, gate at the between of the two gates. Then if the rhino uh, really knows the magic phrase, do you know, is there anyone who knows the magic phrase here? Yeah. So if rhino can say, says, can say the open sesame magic phrase, then rhino can just enter through the gate because it, it, it'll get up in there. So Rhino gets into the cave. So maybe it just depends on his choice. He can go into the left gate or he can go, go to the right gate there. And the verifier comes here and says like, hey, try to come, come out from the right gate. Then to come out from the right gate, Rhino goes to the door and says the open sesame and open the door and should come out from the right gate. And then we can think like, oh, I think Rhino really knows the magic phrase. Maybe some of us uh, realize there is some problem here. Um, yeah. So we're going to ask about the left gaze uh, situation. In this case, actually Rhino just went to the left gate at first. Then the verifier asked come out from the left gate. And actually, 
he doesn't need to say the magic phrase there. Yeah, so actually you can, you can think like this is very probabilistic. This case is called false positive. So the probability of the false positive here is 50%, right? Then uh, how about if we repeat this process, uh, as you said, uh, 10 times here? then uh, the probability, uh, probability of the false positive becomes uh, less than 0 0.1%. Right? We can just repeat this like a thousand times, then we can think, okay, this is pretty, uh, there might be the probability of the false positive is extremely low, then we call this as the soundness. So soundness is a pretty important concept in ZK Snorik. And I'm gonna tell you about why it is important again later. The verifier asks, and the Rhino answers here. And actually the, the set of Rhino's answers is the ZKP. Uh, how can we compute the size of the ZKP here? It definitely depends on the reputation number, right? So if the proof size is very big, then uh, do we have the soundness there? Yes, we have the soundness there. If the proof size is too small, we cannot have the soundness. Like the false positive is too probable, probab is the probability of the false positive too high. So the proof size is pretty important. And here, okay, but uh, imagine if we do this, thousand times at immigration. So immigration officers, okay, just uh, tell me your magic phrase something. Okay, I, actually it, it totally doesn't make sense. So we need the non-interactive system here. Any idea how to make the non-interactive system? Okay, let's go back uh, to the Rhino case. In this case, uh, this is very file. Uh, try to make the random question every time. But what if uh, we generate some random set of questions uh, before this proving, uh, proving happens? Like, uh, just like this. Left, left, right, left, right, left. What is the problem here? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Ryan can cheer on, cheer on us just using the value. So we need to homomorphically encrypt those values. Actually, today we're, gonna, we're not gonna uh, deal with the homomorphic uh, concept here, but um, we should encrypt this uh, in a verifiable way. By the way, before uh, we go to the next slide, I just wanna say here, this is called common reference string because verifier uh, already make, made this uh, for the prover. So this string is shared between the prover and the verifier. So commonly shared string, which is, can be the reference uh, for the proving system. So this is called common reference string. Uh, by the way, because we need to encrypt those values, I'm going to encrypt this in Korean. Maybe there might be only a little people who can read this word. But actually, this is a saying about go left and go right. And if you go left and right, go right twice, something else. So let's assume there is something that can interpret uh, this encrypted common reference string. So actually, interpret is not a um, good explanation here. Uh, in more detail, uh, let me assume that the five years old kid understand hash function here. We are just adding a salt and hashing the value and uh, make a modular there. So it's kind of a deterministic random stuff. So uh, the Rhino never uh, can cheat on that uh, if this Rhino uh, doesn't know the original reference string. By the way, this 
encrypted common reference string is not enough to be used publicly because this is okay when only we want to verify this Rhino is smart. What we want to build is some protocol that can be used publicly, uh, widely, uh, for everyone. So, for example, we have a system that we can uh, we can transfer some ETH using zk proof. Then the zk proof will include some information that I have enough balance and I can generate some signature. And every information will be in the zk proof. But if we, if we can cheat on that, I just can move a lot ETH to my account without the correct information without the signature. This is really important to make anyone, no one knows the original reference string. Yes, this is called the trusted setup. To achieve this, we have to do the trusted setup. Let me explain this uh, one by one. Actually, this is how a ZKP system works with, I mean the ZK snark works with the common reference string. So there is a common reference string made by the trusted setup. It's shared with the prover and the verifier. And the prover and verifier both does not know the seed original reference string here. And then prover picks a random salt and share it with the verifier. And then also, once the prover picks a salt, the prover can drive a set of questions because there is a reference string. Actually, the verifier at first in the interactive system, verifier just gave the question to the Rhino. But in this case, Rhino can generate the questions by, by himself. And also, the verifier can, be, uh, can drive the answers, right answers, without knowing the exact questions. Uh, if the verifier using the homomorphic uh, feature, homomorphic characteristic of the reference string. Uh, it can be a little bit um, tricky, but this is also a pretty important thing. So I want to explain uh, some multi-party computation thing here. Yeah, actually, this is pretty technical, but uh, not that difficult, actually. Please, uh, uh, by the way, uh, let's, uh, let me say why, we, why I'm explaining this multi-party computation here. It's like, do you guys know uh, how the trusted setup works? Why you need to join the ceremony that is shared today's opening ceremony? So I just want to share the how it works and why you need to join the uh, KJG trusted setup ceremony here. So let's go through. Actually, this is pretty for 15 years old kid, but let's go. So <laughs> yeah, um, there is a homomorphic hiding G to the A is kind of a we can make some encrypted value using number A. So actually that is a signature of the homomorphic hiding H, but just think about that just as a hash function. So to think about G to the A is something related to the hash of A. Actually it's kind of a homomorphic hiding of A, but um, then there is a um, characteristic that we can compute the G to the A using number A pretty easily. But in contrast, it's extremely difficult to compute A from G to the A. Actually, this is called the logarithmic discrete um, assumption here, but let's just skip here. Skip here. Uh, and also, if we have a G to the A and B, we can also compute the G to the A, B pretty easily. Okay, this is a, just a, um, some key features of the homomorphic hiding using the elliptic curve cryptography. And uh, let's see how the trusted setup works. So 
Trust setup is creating a common reference string with, uh, and without anyone knows the original reference string. So at first, Alice joined the ceremony and picks the set of the questions. The set of questions here is A, B, C, D, E here. All the A and B and C D and D and E are numbers in a finite field. So some numbers. There are numbers. And then uh, we compute, actually we did some encryption thing here. You remember? So the so left, left, right, left, right, left is A, B, C, D, E. And this something are the encrypted value. G to the A, G to the B, G to the C, something. So we can compute G to the A, G to the B, G to C, and G to the E there. And Alice shares these G to the A and G to the E values publicly to the people. Then Bob joins this ceremony. In this case, uh, Alice may uh, Alice may discard the A B C D E value if Alice is innocent. But if Alice is not innocent, maybe she just uh, store the A B C D E value in her computer. By the way, uh, Alice uh, didn't share the A B C D E value with Bob yet. Okay, then. Bob also picks a set of questions again here. That is F, G, H, I, J. And then we're gonna create a new reference string using G to the A to the G to the E and the F, G, H, I, J only. Because we can compute G to the A, F using G to the A and F together. Bob can generate G to the AF, G to the BG, G to the CH without knowing the A, B, C, D, E value here. Carl does the same thing here. Okay, then um, if any one of these three uh, participants discarded and destroyed the randomly picked question values, then uh, maybe anyone might know the original reference string here, AFK, BGL, CHM, and etc. Because to know AFK, you need all those values, A and F and K. So it means to just recover its original value, you need all the secrets from the old participants of the ceremony. So it makes if any one of the participants just discarded and destroyed the value, then all we are safe. The best way to use this common reference string is actually not to trust anyone. It means just go to the trusted setup ceremony <laughs> and discard your seat there. Then you will be safe at least by yourself. If you just keep it, just discard and destroy it, right? Don't trust anyone. Just trust, actually, don't trust your, yourself too. <laughs> yeah. Just go to the uh, trust setup ceremony. This is the uh, page uh, that shared today's opening ceremony. So you can just go to ceremony.ethereum.org, then you can uh, join the ceremony. And actually, uh, you just saw that this should be conducted in a sequential manner because Ali should do something and share it, and then Bob do something, Bob does something. So uh, there might be some cue, but please don't lose your faith. You, you don't need, you, please don't trust anyone. So uh, go into the queue and let's join the ceremony together. Okay, um, great. Uh, then now, I think I've explained almost every important concept of ZK Snark. Then let's rebuild why this is called ZK Snark using the concepts we just explored today. Okay, so ZK Snark is zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. 
First, zero knowledge means just hiding some information. You remember that I just uh, one, I just wanted to hide my passport number here, and but just wanted to prove something. So this is called just zero knowledge. If you want to hide some value, that can be called zero knowledge. Uh, and uh, to talk about succinct, actually we have to talk about the soundness. You remember, if we have, if we repeat only ten times, the proof will be pretty small. But if we repeat the uh, answering like 10,000 times, the proof size will be larger. It's pretty important to keep the proof succinct while we keep the soundness. So we need to find the great balance there. So succinct is used here for because of the soundness thing. Uh, the non-interactive thing. We can do that at a thousand times at the immigration office, right? So we, have, we should have a non-interactive system and for the non-interactive system, we should do some common reference string. And because of that, we need to do the trusted setup stuff. All we all we we did all these things to prove argument of knowledge from this rhino. Right? So this is called CK snark. Generally succinct, non-interactive, argument of knowledge. So uh, does everyone understand now? Great, I am pretty happy now. Okay, so we're going to uh, go through the apply uh, ZKP stuff. So where can I use ZKP? Mostly people think like um, I can hide something, then uh, it can be used for the privacy, definitely. So uh, the Usages are mainly the privacy and scaling, and there are a lot of undiscovered usages. So let's go to the privacy thing first. Um, yeah, and actually we already go through some difficult uh, concepts like multi-party computation, homomorphic hiding, and um, logarithm um, discrete assumption stuff. So let me assume again that I kid already know such <laughs> function and Mercury proof. Uh, and please, let's remind how the ZK proving system works here again. We have a circuit that represents the relations between witness, including the public inputs and private inputs. And the prover creates a ZKP and the verifier uh, will verify the proof using the circuit together. Uh, and in the Merkle tree, what we want to do here is proving that there exists a leaf in the Merkle tree uh, and without revealing uh, any information about the leaf and the sibling information which can reveal the path of the leaf, uh, which can be kind of a reference. Uh, and here I'm going to share the Merkle root information between the both both the verifier and the prover. So um, this is, where, where, where do we use this thing? At the immigration office. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to prove I'm a member of this group, but I don't want to reveal my identity here. So this is the reason why we do this, this Merkle proof using ZKP. Actually, we can compute the Merkle root using sibling values. And the sibling values also should be private inputs because if they are revealed, then there can be some hint for about the leaf. And then uh, to generate the Merkle proof, we need to compute the intermediate nodes here, right? You need to compute the branch node of the Merkle tree when you compute the Merkle proof. And these intermediate values are the witness. Actually, um, witness also include the private and public, all the values, but uh, I'm going to say this is a witness. And also, this is the relation of the witness. So the first, let's see the first relation. Node 1 is hash of sibling 1 and leaf 1. And node two is hash of the node one and sibling two. Node three, node three is the hash of node two and sibling three. And the finally, 
the computed node 3 uh, should equal to the root value here. This is a relation uh, that we want to prove using the witness. Why we are not revealing the private information here? Okay, so we just put these values like this. So there is a circle circuit. Uh, the logic is uh, blue color, and the private inputs are the green color, and public inputs are the red color here. Then we can generate ZK proof, and the verifier can prove that okay, uh, you don't need to reveal the private inputs, but I have the information about, the, about this group, which is the root value, the public input, red thing, and also there is a relation, logic, between the witness here that is the marker proof. Uh, and this members proof thing also can be used for various usages. Actually, first of all, uh, the privacy protocol, uh, definitely, and for the privacy protocol, uh, we have the very good example for the identity. Um, we are having the semaphore protocol, which is just the name of a um, membership proof protocol that uh, keeps your identity private but lets you vote on some agenda uh, in an anonymous manner. And also, we can have some private transaction stuff, uh, Zcash, and also Aztec's, uh, Aztec ZK money, and Polygon Nightfall, and PS Team Zico Pro, and Tornado Cash. They are all the, uh, implementing the same um, logic with this members proof system. Uh, and also, this members proof system can be implemented in various ways. Uh, definitely, the first way is the method that I shared here, the marker proof thing. And actually, recently, uh, people are exploring another methodology using the vector commitment, which can uh, let us express a set of values uh, using a polynomial. Yeah, so if you are interested, in, you can just uh, Google this cock and uh, take a deep look at that. Um, by the way, we have 10 more minutes, so <laughs> I'm going to use 10 more minutes, uh, all, all the 10, 10 minutes. So The next example is the scaling. You guys are pretty um, familiar with the word roll-up, right? So actually, the roll-up started, um, I guess it started from 2018 by Barry, uh, the, our PSC team's leader. Uh, and roll-up started from the ZK roll-up. And I'm going to explain uh, what is the basic form of ZK roll-up here. Uh, okay, so uh, the first uh, block is a just a normal, some Ethereum block. Let's assume that this is a normal Ethereum block. Then there should be some transactions. Transaction one, transaction two, and for each transaction, every account, external owned account, should generate the ECDSA signature, right? So every transaction has its matching transaction a signature there. And we, finally, we compute the block hash using some another values there. But how if we uh, make these signatures as private input? What happens here? We can just remove the private inputs, and we can replace that using its ZKP. This is just what ZK rollup is. And here are two advantages. What are the two advantages here? Yeah, definitely, the data use. And the another one, because if we just compress all the signatures, then we don't need to verify all the electric curve signatures. So let's assume that if we have 10,000s of signatures, then the zero knowledge proof can be much less than the 10,000 of the signatures. So we can uh, reduce the data size a lot. And also, we can skip the computation just using the cryptographical uh, verifying system. 
So we have a two advantages here, the scaling of the computation and the scaling of the data uses. So yeah, so this is the reason why we are, tr we are using ZK for scaling solutions. Uh, and actually there is a tutorial that you can implement the simple ZK rollup by yourself. So if you want to just uh, deep dive into the, how it really works, then uh, you can just go to there and go to the tutorial. Then uh, it'll be very helpful for you to understand how it works. Okay, and for the next, uh, I'm gonna share another fun examples. Macy and rate limiting, limiting nullifier. Macy is a, st Macy stands for minimal anti-collision infrastructure, which means, actually, have you tried the CLR fund before using Gitcoin fund, quadratic fund? So quadratic fund, in quadratic fund, it is very useful to buy the vote because um, the number of the participants is much important than the amount of the votes, right? In quadratic body. So buying the vote is pretty useful. Then how can we prevent vote buying attack? Collecting all the votes first, and then the coordinator uh, mix it and generate a new state tree. Then the voter cannot prove that uh, I voted to this one. Then we can just prevent the vote buying attack. So we can also use ZKP here that the coordinator mixed the result without just modifying them correctly using zero knowledge proof. So we are also doing the uh, CLR fund for, uh, CLR fund for DAFCON. So you can go to the it Columbia, the CLR fund uh, to participate in the new round, quadratic funding round. And the another really fun example is the rate limiting nullifier. Um, this is it's pretty novel and maybe it is pretty hard to think about this concept from ZKP because we can just, we, just, we are just thinking about like only the privacy or scaling, right? Then let's uh, see what it is. So there is a polynomial, a one degree polynomial. So it is Y equals AX plus B. And actually, this polynomial is a polynomial that I just chose, that I just chose. And actually, the value B is my secret key of Ethereum. Then, okay, then I can share you some point on this line. But if I share you more than two points, what happens? You can just compute this polynomial, right? Because you have two points and this is one degree. So you can just know the A and A and B. Then you can know my secret key. So my secret gets revealed. So rate limiting nullifier is using this. Actually, this protocol is Charmir's secret sharing protocol. Rate limiting nullifier is uh, using this to prevent spam attack. If I want to communicate with you, I should revolve my point on, on the polynomial to you. So if I, uh, if I just send you too many messages, then actually you can just recover my polynomial and just get all my ETH from the account, right? But here we have to use ZKP that all these shared points are on the polynomial. This is the only the relation. Pretty simple, right? Then we can use this for a spam protection protocol. We are doing a lot of experiments using this right limiting nullifier concept uh, for the consensus layer and also the peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking. Okay, so this is the last. So from five years old kid to a student, 
Uh, I want to recommend this curriculum. The first one is just write a CKP application using the tutorial thing I shared uh, for the ZK rollup. Then it will let you, uh, it will help you understand how ZKP works and how the proving system works there. And then you need to study and learn about the at first abstract algebra because in the proving system, we are using a specific set of numbers and we need to understand how these numbers works and how the homomorphic hiding works. To understand this, actually you need to understand the abstract algebra and the group theory thing. After that, please study and learn about the lactic curve cryptography first. And then after that, please study about the pairing based cryptography. Then maybe some of you guys are heard about a Planck and KGG and inner product argument stuff. And they are all the uh, kind of a um, things after you, after you study about this pairing based cryptography and then abstract algebra and then extra. So after you study these three things, then uh, please study about the Planck, which is arithmetization, which means the converting your program into a polynomial. Then after then just uh, go through the polynomial commitment schemes, which is like how to make the questions and how to make the answers. What we have done using the Alibaba case with the rightness. Actually, the arithmetization is pretty related to the polynomial commitment scheme. So you're gonna study with some RNCS arithmetization with Groth 16, and you're gonna study Planck arithmetization with KGG or inner product argument. Uh, thank you everyone. So I'm Wansup uh, from Ethereum Foundation, PSC team, and I hope this session helped you a lot. Thank you so much.